Let us look at what are the mechanism which are studied in the modern psychology which connect yoga and help us to balance emotions and cognition. Many of these are uh, connectors of positive psychology and yoga. Since this is 20th session, uh, this is the appropriate time we can look at what are the modern constructs which connect positive psychology and yoga. We are also going to look at the various research studies which are conducted uh, by our team in IIT Bombay to examine these connections. So, the mechanism which connect yoga uh, and help us in gaining balance in emotions and cognitions are mindfulness, interoception, distancing, centering, subjective vitality self-regulation, self-efficacy, creative problem solving, emotional intelligence, empathy, compassion, broadening of the perspective, emotional intelligence, egocentric bias, it means reducing the egocentric bias, attention, memory, executive function, processing speed, uh, general cognition, self-transcendence and many more others like cognitive flexibility, uh, like emotional uh, connection etcetera, etcetera. So, you can see many, many psychological constructs which are studied in the current times are inculcated with the practice of yoga and these are the mediating factors which uh, help yoga to make our mind friendly towards ourselves and towards the world around. We will look at these uh, construct one by one uh, and then we will look at the general mechanism through which these uh, constructs or these variables affect different aspects of the psychological health like uh, moral reasoning or psychological capital etcetera. Mindfulness that is the first thing. Uh, mindfulness is a open unbiased awareness of and attention to the inner experience and manifest actions, our ability to observe ourselves that is mindful awareness. Mindful metacognition is our ability to look at the wider pattern. Mindful observation, this is the third aspect of mindfulness that is our ability to observe what is happening in my body, in my mind. That is the very important factor, that is the excellent outcome of yoga based practices which result into making our mind friendly. Interoception, interoception is the examination of one's conscious thoughts and feelings. Interoception means I am intelligent not only to the external perceptions, I am also aware, I am also able to make sense of the intrinsic perception that is uh, the inner senses. My ability to observe and being aware of that is interoception and in that way it is of different direction of perception. Distancing is another mechanism that is its response. Uh, our ability to reflect back uh, surveying the environment and reflecting on the course of action. Instead of being dominated by immediate stimulus, we keep uh, bombarded with the stimulus. Some are pleasant, some are unpleasant. Not operating immediately after getting stimulus but our ability to process the information, surveying the environment and then choosing the most appropriate action that is distancing. Self-regulation, self-regulation is efforts one expands to monitor. Self-regulation is also reflected in willpower. 
and motivation to manage and modulate one's emerging impulses and responses in order to pursue and maintain absolute goals. Uh, so, self regulation is uh, regulating our self and self is not only in terms of our mind, our cognition, it is also about our emotions, it is also about our behavior. Subject to vitality, that is the first many people has, have reported that the first experience of performing and practicing yoga is subject to vitality, uh, that is expression of energetic arousal, a sense of positive energy. It is defined as having a physical and mental energy that generates a sense of enthusiasm, aliveness, efficacy and energy available to the self. Next factor which is generated with the practice of yoga and it is very much part of the positive psychology is centering. Centering is the technique whose aim is to increase and focus attention and energy to provide relief from stress and anxiety or both. In our day to day life, we keep getting exposed to the unpleasant stimulus or interactions which we are not able to enjoy, which we are not able to appreciate and because of that uh, stress and anxiety emanate. On the face of that, in that situation, our ability to practice pratyahar, our ability to bring our senses more inward and focusing or directing our attention to the most valued goals and our objectives at time that is the process called centering and that is facilitated, that is generated, that capability is generated with the practice of yoga. Self-efficacy, self-efficacy is my confidence about my capability for doing what I consider uh, is important and valuable in my life. When beset by problems and adversity, our ability of sustaining and bouncing back and even beyond to attain success that is self-efficacy. Creative thinking, we all have some experience of creative thinking. It is a comprehensive cognitive and affective system. It is as much cognitive as it is emotional. Uh, creative thinking is built on our natural creative processes that deliberately ignites uh, uh, and generates creative solutions and changes. That is also uh, nurtured with the practice of yoga, broadening of the perspective. Uh, that means, broadening the comprehension of the organization, increasing the, compre the comprehension of the organization of which we are part of, uh, increasing the comprehension and increasing our ability to perceive a broader form of system. We all are part of some system, uh, all the systems are part of the bigger system. When we lose out on our perspective about the bigger system of which we are part of, we start operating from our uh, limited self interest and because of that many a time we feel agitated and anxious when we are not able to get what we expect to get out of any situation. In that uh, situation, we need to look at the broader system, we need to be able to see how the bigger system operates of which I am part of. In that process, we can either strategize better or we can recognize the limitation of what I can expect and what I should not expect, uh, what kind of outcome I should seek or pursue or what kind of item we should not seek or pursue. So, this is the uh, broadening of the perspective and that is also attained with the practice of yoga and we are going to look at some of the research studies which have beautifully uh, demonstrate how yoga help us in broadening the perspective. Uh, then comes perception of emotion, the capacity to recognize emotions, what am I feeling? Uh, not only what I am feeling, but what others might be feeling or what others are feeling, that capacity also is enhanced 
with the yogic practice. Uh, emotional facilitation of thought, we can appropriately use the power of emotion. This aspect is about that. We can choose the appropriate emotion, which can direct our cognitive ability towards valued goals. That is the faculty called emotional facilitation of thought. Understanding emotion, that is uh, uh, deeply, uh, that is closely related ability to comprehend emotional information and how emotions consolidate and advance through the relationship alterations. Managing emotion, very important aspect of emotional intelligence and we all know that emotional intelligence is one of the key capability to be success in the personal and professional life. Managing emotion is our ability to, to be exposed to emotions and yet directing them in oneself as well as other people. Our ability to use the emotion for the positive goals, uh, that is managing emotions. Yogic practices also help in reducing egocentric bias. Why we have to reduce egocentric bias? Because higher egocentric bias will be a great obstacle in experiencing all those factors we have been uh, discussing thus far, centering, mindfulness, uh, self-regulation, all those factors which we have discussed in the previous two, three slides, we, our ability to uh, experience those, our ability to utilize those is diminished with the high egocentric bias. Egocentric bias is a form of self-serving cognitive process that prevents individuals from looking beyond their immediate personal uh, benefits and losses. Uh, compassion, that is the another aspect of the uh, yogic practices, uh, that is another capability we develop with the yogic practices. Compassion is an attitude towards others, either close others or even strangers or to all humanity, containing feeling, cognitions and behavior that are focused on caring concern, tenderness and orientation towards supporting, helping and understanding others. Compassion is ability to experience, ability to reflect on what others might be feeling. If their others are suffering, compassion also helps in acting to remove their suffering, to relieve them from their suffering. Self transcendence, that is another great human capability. Self transcendence encompasses the psychological states of experiencing oneself relating to others, having a sense of meaning and acceptance, decreased self salience or increased connectedness. That the most important terms in this definition is decreased self saliency and increasing connectedness when my identity is no, is less limited to my physical boundary, my uh, boundary of my immediate relationships, but my ability to cognitively and experientially connected to the bigger system, it is more than cognition that is called self transcendence. This is a feeling of union with higher power, nature or the whole cosmos. So, these are some of the factors uh, which are the result of yogic practices, all the practices we discussed in the previous session and these factors help our mind to remain friendly to ourselves and to the world.